حکومت ایران The government of Iran is using, it has supported itself, has surrounded itself with uh, supporters and actually has armed these uh, gangs. In fact, these are gangs which they are calling Basij. In order to uh, prevent the street demonstrators, they in fact uh, are using first of all these besieges who go ahead and kill a few people and then only the police arrive on the scene. There were films of demonstrations in the streets. And these films already show how much firearms are being used in order to kill demonstrators. The government itself has announced that there were 20, or another time 29, and finally 34 victims. But the uh, independent human rights associations have indicated that the toll was much heavier, 360 victims. So this human rights uh, Iran has published something and we have the names of 72 persons who have been killed in human rights. And we have collected this information from them together with photos or film the body of these victims, and the place where they were killed and the place of uh, their uh, address, in fact, where they were living while they were alive. This information is available, is in front of me now. Should you wish it, you can obtain it. The, another thing that the government did, which is quite criminal, was quickly burying the dead without indicating who is buried where in the cemeteries. This is without notifying next of kin. And in the 80s, the government did that already. In the 80s, 30,000 detainees were executed. And they were, of course, put in mass graves, their bodies. The precise information, the pictures, photographs of the cemeteries by the Human Rights Association have been taken and are also available and can hand them over if you wish. Now, the next item, which is very short, is that the events after the elections meant that uh, the previous violations of human rights were pale compared to what was happening after the elections. One of the difficulties in the past was the matter of uh, religious minorities, such as Baha'is, Jews, and Christians. The Iranian government actually was so reprehensive that a lot of Muslims turned to other religions in accordance with the laws of the Iranian government. Uh, changing here, that is leaving Islam, is punishable by death. We have lots of people who are now in prisons awaiting their execution because they changed their religion. 
apart from that, there are people who did not change their religion, but from the, in, initially they were already of a different faith to start with, such as Baha'is, and especially the Jews. The government does not allow them to study in university or to teach in university. They cannot work in the public uh, offices. And therefore they are not, do not have access to social rights. If you look at the website of the Human Rights Association, which is also in English, you will see that we have every week three or four news which show that Baha'i or Christian or Jewish uh, believers have been attacked by the Basij and their houses were looted. Or maybe they have a shop and the shop is then looted and there is no, no possibility of uh, uh, appealing against this. We can prove actually that all of this is part of a pre arranged campaign. The final point which I wanted to point out here is about a rather large group of Iranians which, have a, which is a grouping against the government. They are active there. They have a camp in Iraq. They live there now for many years. When America attacked Iraq, in accordance with uh, what was in, this, in, in accordance with the Geneva Conventions or Protocol Number Four, the safety of this group was the responsibility of the United States government. But lately, contrary to the protocol, fourth protocol of Geneva Conventions, the security of these people was handed over to the government of Iraq. In other words, the government of Iran, in turn, using its good relations with the government of Iraq, actually created such a situation, but now the Iraqi government, instead of protecting this group, is actually attacking it. About 3,500 people live in that camp. They are not military. Are, but the police, or the Iraqi police, entered this camp, killed a few, arrested over 30, and many were wounded. Now, the water or medicines do not reach this camp, and of course it has no doctors. And many people there, in fact, are not, uh, they have uh, now gone on a hunger strike. Well, whatever its political affiliation, because we are not political, but what is important to us is these are human beings, 3,500 people. They have gone on hunger strike and today is the 50th day of their hunger strike. They ask that someone from the United Nations be there to overlook, to look at the situation. They need doctors, they need medical care, they need medicines. And basically request the United Nations to take a hand so that the Geneva Convention is respected and to find out what is their future. I'm 
very grateful for your attention.